Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at Productronica 2017 on the Scoop Studio and I'm joined by Jürgen Torner. Jürgen, always a pleasure to talk to you. Always you, so much going on with you in the companies you're consulting for and the companies you're visiting. We've been talking about Smart Factory Industry 4.0 for too long. Let's consider what's actually happening, what yeah, real case examples. Yeah. What's going on out there in the market? That's a really good question. So, um, because, yeah, we have been talking on, about the Smart Factory for at least two years now, maybe three, but I haven't seen a real Smart Factory anywhere implemented in the world. Everybody's talking about, um, the problem here is this, that most of the people who talk about the Smart Factory, what they mean is a highly automated factory. And only very, very few people think further ahead and think what is the real benefit of the, of the smart factory. And that is not only automation and flexibility, but it's generating data and make use of these data. And uh, um, I was surprised coming here uh, to Produktronika this year because um, what I see here is um, compared to last year or two years ago, more and more of these individual elements that you need to, to realize and implement a smart factory, like robots, like AGVs, you see them more and more here on the show. And that, that, that is an indication that we are moving in the right direction, of course not as fast as everybody would have thought two years ago. And the other thing that surprises me very positively is um, Productronica's um, latest child is IT to industry, which is a sub running over there in Hall B2. It's only a few small booths, um, but I think um, it's a right start for the right thing because what happens is two worlds are colliding. The IT world and the manufacturing world are coming together. The problem, IT doesn't speak manufacturing and manufacturing doesn't speak IT. There is a gray space in between yeah. and this gray space needs to be filled. And the first IT companies have realized this and they show up here at the booth. Um, IBM is there. I, I was checking this out just before I came here. A small booth with three young chaps, um, but very enthusiastic. Um, and they said, well, this is only the beginning, and I'm pretty sure they are right. Next year, this will be much bigger. And in uh, or next time, in two years and in four years, they will probably dominate the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, I think it's interesting. And when we look back at the Hanover Fair as an example, we saw those large players. We saw the IBMs. We saw yeah. Microsoft. Yeah. We saw those players getting involved. And they're getting involved in our industry in a way that perhaps we didn't consider. They're, they're getting involved in artificial intelligence, the digital twin, different levels of automation. So I think, I think it's, it's moving very much, Absolutely. very much in the right direction. Luckily, you do speak IT and you do speak ops. I speak so a little it, bit of both, but yeah. I speak more ops and a little IT. Yeah, so I think that's important. Are you, when you talk to, when you go out and you consult and you talk to customers, they have a better understanding of what they want now, at least, as a starting point. What's, what's slowing them down? For me, sometimes it's the enormity of the project, and sometimes it's not being able to recognize where the ROI is or the how they can measure it. Absolutely, uh, very true. And this is again the point, most people don't even think far enough. Um, they think about automation uh, and how they could fully automate um, their factories, but they have since they are not out of the IT industry, they have, have not, not a good idea about uh, what they can gain and especially what they can gain for their customer out of the data they are uh, generating. Um, and it's really important that, that you bring these two worlds together. And that's, that's part of the things I'm doing at the moment, um, trying to bring manufacturing knowledge into IT and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's lots of opportunities there. I, I've been talking to IT people about blockchain and the opportunity yes, that that absolutely. gives us with cybersecurity, and that's really important. Last question, if you were advising a, a smallish or a medium-sized contract manufacturer that wants to get into this space, my first advice might be to call Jorgen Turner, but beyond, <laughs> that, beyond that, what would, what would you tell them to just get them started? Well, to get started, of course, I would, would go with the, ob uh, the obvious thing, uh, use all these elements and realize the automation so that you can really do an, um, like, um, uh, reach a highest flexibility, come to virtual lot size one, um, set up your factory such with all the IT infrastructure, we are not, not yet talking about what to do with the data, but set it up with all the IT infrastructure such that a customer order, order comes in and the, and the factory automatically will start producing the thing. Um, and then once this thing, um, small lots of I don't, maybe a couple hundred um, uh, um, products, and then the next comes, okay? Um, and the electronics industry can learn a lot out of, from the automotive industry. 
Uh, Porsche has a factory in eastern Germany where they exactly do the same thing. They, on one manufacturing line, they produce uh, the Panamera uh, and the Cayenne and, and something else. In the sequence, um, the cars have been ordered by the customer. Yeah. And that's, that should be a role model for the electronics industry as well. Because we have the challenge that we need to go into high mix, high volume yeah. with the Internet of Things devices. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we have to go into that mass customization, which gives yeah. us a lot size of one. Jürgen, always a joy to chat to you. Thanks for coming by and thanks for talking. Thanks, thanks Phil. Thank, Thank you. you.